the whole thing. I got some notes that I probably won't ever look at. I printed off all your Wikipedia stuff that I probably won't read. Uh, I took that off. And- we'll just probably wing it like we always do. If there's anything you don't want to answer, just say, hey, I don't want to answer that question. We'll be cool with that. But we're live right now, Rip. We are live. Lila Studios every Friday at noon, except for sometimes on Thursdays and, and yeah. any other day of the week that we might go live. Well, we got the blueprint on live, so we got to do that. That's right. So, you know, Lila's a nice guy. He's giving me some cold uh, spaghetti. It was time to, I was supposed to be here at 740, and he was in there taking a big shit. <laughs> and, and, and I said, hey, I'm here. I'm taking a shit. I, it was only 735. I told you 740. Why, you want me? <laughs> I had to I mean, be on time. You know, if I, I ain't gonna. I'm early. I ain't. I ain't on time. All I'm right. Early. So we are live with the blueprint. <laughs> Matt Morgan, former. Gosh, you're probably former everything. OVW star, WWE star, TNA star, uh, uh, Gladiator star. Probably Japan. I would say somewhere in there. Yeah. The uh, the 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 mayor or, or something. What are you now? Anyway, what's your what's your official uh, title now? Current mayor in the city of Longwood, Florida. Current mayor. Rip's got the phone going off already in the first <laughs> first minute. Of 14. course, it's Romer. Romer's on the phone. Mayor. Uh, we got a mayor Romer. on here, Rip. We're moving on up at Lila uh, Studio. Okay, hey, look at got, him, I, sharp I, dressed I, man, Mayor. This is got Romer calling, you know. A monumental exactly night. We're starting, you know. Monumental night right here at Lila Studios. What's up, man? How are you? I'm doing He's great. Tall. I'm so happy to see you guys. I'm so happy to see you start this podcast. I know every single one of us from OVW probably had the same reaction, our jaw on the ground, going, <laughs> holy bleep, how did he get Rip Rogers to do a podcast? But more importantly, buckle up because it's going to be the most entertaining podcast there is because Rip is the most entertaining person there is. What an ass kisser. That's awesome. <laughs> I, you are. We want me to I tell you. I, I, don't get, now, don't Should've... get me wrong. I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to um, not tell the truth on how I used to try to gank all my protein bars uh, at practice. I needed them. <laughs> Remember you that? You didn't the need them. Bars? I, I heard they made you grow. Get taller. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work on me. I think I was too old then. Yeah, right. Hey, remember right. that battle royal in Seymour when you first come in and every time you grab a hold of somebody to slap you in the back? <laughs> yes. I, didn't, I, I didn't say I instigated that or tell them how to do it, but uh, I'm guilty as charged. <laughs> Just for the yes. hell of a little initiation. Yes. Yes. So how'd that go down? Do you really remember it? What what happened? I think I was there, but not in the match. I think it was in the crowd. What what happened basic, in that match? Basic rib. Basic ribbon. But the bigger rib was, do you remember when Rip made us learn? Thank God you did this, by the way, Rip. But um, anybody that asks, I always tell them the same thing. Rip is the best trainer there is. And I'm not kissing ass. It's the truth, Rip. Um because you always made sure that we were what overly prepared over, for anything. over fucking prepared for anything yeah, for anything and if they so ask if you can do it you lie and say hell yeah i can I, do it i did it to vincent man when he told me to stutter now man, <laughs> but maybe you should have said no <laughs> maybe i should have but that's not how i was taught how i was taught right yeah or trained so anyways best rib ever was when rip was training us on how to you know, do an hour Broadway, call the match on the fly. We couldn't rehearse it, couldn't talk to nobody beforehand. We didn't know who he was going to pair us up with. And I was crapping my pants all week. So nervous about this because I'm watching Doug and Damager do their thing. Rob and Nick do their thing. Nova doing his thing. And finally, I was like one of like the last ones to finally go because I was probably the more of the newer uh, students at the time. And I don't know if you remember this, Rip, but you had me do it with Jackie Gata. Oh God! And and in the middle of the match, he called. He asked us to flip flop our Switch. roles. Switch. And now Jackie Gata was seven foot tall, monster Matt Morgan. I right. was diva Jackie Gata. And you so had to watch eventually, like I you... take her hand. I take right. her hand. I put it on my neck, and I give myself a choke slam with her hand. Um, but more importantly, I learned to get that nervousness out of my system. Of what would happen if, you know, somebody forgets a spot in a match, somebody gets hurt, things that I needed to learn, especially when I went to Japan and I don't speak Japanese um, and to be able to be comfortable in that ring and uh, either read their body language or more importantly, just be able to uh, call things on the fly and, uh, you know, understand the language of wrestling. Yeah, that's awesome. In, in Japan, 
See, here's, here's where they talk. Oh, yo, yo, hi, yo, 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 choke slam, oh, yo, yo, hi, yo, 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 I'm a drag, oh, yo, hi, yo, hi, yo, suplex, oh, uh, ripperoni. That's, rip <laughs> that's it. What was the ripperoni? Was that the, uh, that the... was a Boston crab where I'd hump like I was, uh, not, <laughs> I, was a, I was a guy that didn't like, I was a guy that didn't like women. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Since, you know, <laughs> since I'm banned with everything or whatever, you know, you, you have to read between the lines. Well, yeah, I think you can say the word. Just probably. like when I'd be wrestling and people start going. Mm, yeah, you can't say that. Yeah, okay. I'm not sorry. That that that's a different that, yeah. word. You can't say a different that. word. Okay. So I, I was in um, I was in your class for a while. I don't know if you remember or not, but I was in I was in those classes, man. And, and I always hid every single time that it was time for the 60 minute Broadway or whatever. I always head down, head the other way, whatever I could do. Sure. He never yeah. picked me anyway, but. So while we're on that topic, and we'll get to way more OVW stuff, but while we're talking about that, did you ever get the ding, get the fuck out of the ring, when Rip would ding the bell at <laughs> the on, desk? Of course. And then Absolutely. kick you out of the ring? You got a story on that that you remember or why you got kicked out of the ring? More than once. It happened a few times. More, more than a few times. Um, it was, um, God, what was it? It was, it was actually not a full match. It was like one of our drills we were doing. Yeah, that's when he would usually do it. And, and it was, get the fuck out. <laughs> that sound like Nova. That, that was the shit. That sound like Nova yeah. doing me. That's awesome. <laughs> Is that how it sounds? Yeah. Have good. you guys had him on this? Yeah, he was on. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was on not too long ago. He was on. He, he did a good job. We've had a bunch of people on, man. Um, huh? Yeah, we've had a we've had a whole whole slew of people on. I seen your one. I seen Mondo. Mondo's was pretty good. Yeah, we had Mondo, Nick, Rob, um, Nova, Rob. G Jeter was on. Uh, oh, damn. Mickey James, Gail Kim. Who else we had on? Rip? Shelly Martinez. Shelly Martinez. Dr. Tom. Oh, Dr. Cool. T Dr. Tom. Renee Dupree was just on. I saw that. I saw Renee. Yeah, he was on live. So he did our, our first our first live. So all the cool. top stars here at Lila Studios. Matt well, Morgan. It's like I mean. what you... See, you were a giant in the wrestling business, but I got you being comfortable enough to go 60 minutes. Remember, yeah. uh, remember, uh, the prophet, of being, course, yeah, you know, that, yeah, yeah. I remember I told him he was gonna go an hour, right? Yeah, he almost hyperventilated thinking yeah. about it. Oh, I. We lived in the same apartment complex at the time. I remember. He, okay. <laughs> and I, I remember I watched him and I thought he was going to pass out. And I said, ah, just sit this one out. And I had somebody else get in there. I'm thinking, man, that's some bitch. He might have died or something. I said, I didn't want to so, get that much, that much heat. <laughs> so I probably sound like an old grizzled, you know, old guy here, but the kids, do you think the kids today could do that? Could do what? An hour. Be able to call a match on the fly. You know what's funny? This guy named Travis Stewie looked like Rod Steele, but he was legit 6'9". Damn. Man. He's he uh he's got the record. Eddie Diamond and the body guy went two hours. What? Yes. Yeah, so they went two hours and five minutes. God dang. You, you got to remember, Matt, when I started coaching, I never coached before. I didn't know that, actually. Yeah. I didn't know that. So I'm, it's trial and error how I go, right? Yeah. And now here's a guy six foot nine. This other guy, Bud Dwight, he's about your size. I think he's about six five. And they went, you know, two hours. I said, well, the record's two hours. I said, well, we're going two hours and five. And it was called on the fly. Yeah. And I told them they was going to do it now. And that was it. And I said, you got it? No, I said, we got this. So then Travis, he did it. Then he did a 20 minute promo on one word. I said, that light, no, two words, that light. I said, give me a 20-minute promo, go. He started talking, this and that. At the end of it, it all come down to that light. <laughs> I said, well, class is out of here. You, you, nobody can top that son of a bitch. But, like, so I watch wrestling still. When I, I watch AEW, I try to catch SmackDown. Oh, my God, you're a better man than me if you can watch AEW. No, wait a minute, we love Tony. I forgot yeah, about we love that. AEW. 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 <laughs> A E W A E. I, oh, uh, sometimes, three yeah, times. Yeah, so, okay, three I, I know, but this, that was a rib. You know? But every time I watch this stuff, I always think in my head, like, what must Jimmy, what must Rip, what must Danny Davis think when they Here's watch it? 
how core, overly choreographed it is now, and it's more. It's really all about the moves now. Well, I'll let Rip rip on the choreograph here in a second. But to answer your kind of question, because Rip went with his class, those guys, though, the only credit I will give them, I shouldn't say the only credit, I couldn't <laughs> imagine being able to remember all of those spots for right. the entire match. I I, I, I don't know how they do it. to call a match on the fly than, than to remember 35 spots in a row. I second that. I agree with that. I thought I mean, the same thing as far as there's no way I can memorize all that. No way. That, that's, I mean... So could they do it? I mean, I don't know. Maybe if they planned, not on the fly, probably, unless because it's just because listen, call listen. The the thing is, you got to remember, call match on the fly is is you is yeah. you going off of the crowd, right? So yeah. a lot of it, the crowd is the crowd biting on this, or are they not? If they're not, you got to flip flop and switch shit, and yeah. you get them back, right? So with what they're doing today. They're just hoping that the crowd's going to pop for those high spot moves that they all do. And of course the crowd's going to pop because they're high spots, but they're not, it's not organic. They're not organically listening to the audience. And they're not getting new people either. I mean, they're not, it's weird. It's hard to explain. Yeah. Their, their, their ratings, you got to remember first they had one show, then they went to two shows. So that's true. But in how they're, they're about year number three. I think so. Yeah. And they're basically drawing the same thing they draw. They yeah, did draw. Yeah. I think they yeah. got in a shot in the arm when they got punk, but now they're back. I think they're back to the, the SOS, but, uh, yeah. you know. So I what do you to, think about the spot fest rip? Choreograph moves. Well, that ain't for me. And that ain't for, that ain't for guy that drew money. And that ain't the way you work, but, no. but hardly any people really know that anymore. No. And, and these guys were brought up of here's my match. Yep. Here's my promo. Yep. Where we were brought up just fucking working. Yep. Never in my life did I get in a ring and choreograph a match and go over it. I used to go down to WCW and I'd see guys in the ring. I said, what the fuck are they doing? Oh, they're going through their match. Going through their match? God damn. (laughs) Because how do you know what you're going over is going to work? How do you know it's going to work? They don't. And that's when they just, what happens then, they fart at it. They fart yeah. at it, so now they go even faster, faster, faster. Well, they need to go slower, slower, slower and get a hold and work out of it, but they don't know that. And nobody in AEW, the, the agents are not going to say nothing. They just want to get that free check from Tony. I think it's blue, blueprint, I think that's what you, you need to call Tony up. Say, hey, I'm a goddamn monster right here. I'm an <laughs> ex-WWE star, so you should be able to pay me like everybody else. you got so much goddamn money. You got that shitty football team, but not this year. No, no, they, no. Might, make, they might make the playoffs. They're this year, on Rip. fire, and they yeah. had the worst record in the NFL the last how many since he, uh, he took thirty five years. He took over his ownership or yeah. something like since that. they created the team. No, wow. they've been they've been in there a couple times. Wow. <sighs> now I remember the blueprint one time. Now here, blue. Here's the thing with with blueprint. Matt, you were what legit six nine. He's seven six, foot. Ten, six, ten, six, ten, oh, three quarters. Six, ten. There you go. Okay, whatever it was. And then they had the gimmick boots. Yeah. And then, oh, my God. I was like seven were... foot two when I first got there because I thought I had to be the height, like the shoot height that I was being billed at. <laughs> oh. I swear to God. I didn't know. Yeah. Oh. Gimmick. I didn't know. Wait a second. You were a basketball their... player. You should have known better. I didn't know people gimmick their heights and weights. And I swear to God, I didn't. I thought like well, Baker, seven feet, Kane, seven foot one. Like, I didn't know. Well, what they do in the NFL and the NBA and everybody else, Barkley's about six three and a half. That's true. <laughs> That's true. I said he was a D one basketball seven, player. Six, six. He, should, he should have known that. I already I, knew that. I said he should have known. Did you your height? <laughs> oh, okay. He's not he should, wrong. <laughs> he should have known that before wrestling. I know, oh, right? anyway, Matt, Matt, your problem is you were tall, well built, young. Good looking. You know how everybody loves you until you start doing better than them? Yeah. You got caught into that shit. Yeah. And you also, being a big guy, you worked like a little guy. Yeah. You ah. did, you did, no, no, you did, too, you knew too much stuff. As a giant, you'd only see giants only want to do. Oh, you could beat me with a tie up. You could any hold could be a a, a tap out, yeah. concede anything. 
Yes. And you, you was trying to be a worker and not just stay on, just be aggressive, be aggressive, be aggressive, right. be aggressive, right. make him go the ropes or whatever, this or that. But, but I saw that and, and I knew that, but I'm thinking, well, they'll smarten him up. To, then he, but he's just showing them he can do all these stupid moves, which mean nothing, especially since he's a giant. He got 22 inch arms, but, but, but he's doing all this shit. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, well, that, then they'll, they'll, they'll see he can do all this shit and then they'll mold him the way they want to mold him. Because you got to remember when I was there, they never told me one thing to do with anybody. Right. If I, if, if they, they used to say, Oh, make him a heel. They'd bring him up as a baby face. I don't know if it was a rib. So I started trying to train everybody both ways. Yeah. And to like, and to switch characters and to be, you know, like, uh, okay, now you're the girl and she's yeah. you now. Now you got to work like a little girl, just yep. stuff to make you to learn to work and be relaxed yep. at everything. And that everything's a rib. Don't get excited because then you'll blow up and you'll think yep. too much. And the match That's will be the shit. And the match will be the fucking shits because you're trying too hard. Yep. It's just got to be a natural fucking flow. I wasn't able to get any, like the light bulb for me, honestly, didn't go off rip until I got to TNA. So everything I learned from you, everything I learned from Jimmy, mm -hmm. everything I learned from Danny, um, it really didn't go off for me, honest to God, until I got to TNA where I was a lot more comfortable. I was able to be right. myself. I was able to talk like myself, God forbid, not stutter. Um, I was able <laughs> to, you know, let my hair down, so to speak, uh, at house shows and things like that. Like I sh they should have been doing that with me in WWE. I should have been brought up on the road on doing nothing but house shows, house shows, house shows, house shows, and then still going to practice at OVW for at least two years. But they brought me up with eight months of experience. I got from Tough Enough too. that stupid show I was on. Mm -hmm. I had like eight and a half months of training as a baby uh -huh. face, keep in mind. And then they yeah. bring me up to SmackDown as a heel and put me with Nathan Jones, Big Show, A-Train. Like, I'm no longer a giant. In that group, I'm like the second tallest. Right. right. You, you know what I mean? So not making excuses, but obviously there's a big, big difference between my working my size and working how I look. I didn't really get that. I didn't understand that honestly, Rip, until I got to TNA. And right. Kurt, Kurt Angle was there at the time and he made sure of it. He was on me like flies on shit. Okay. On working my size and working how you look. We have all these other guys here. They just thought we've all these other guys that can do all the athletic shit, man. It's not why you're here. We need you to be a giant. And so then I started to do it. Yeah. Yeah. But you just listed, like you said, those guys that you went up to work with right away and Holy cow, they're all <laughs> huge. All of so them are me, huge. <laughs> so let me ask you a question in those eight man tags, who's supposed to be bumping and feeding because I'm yeah. the only one that could is me. It wasn't going to be a big show. The damn sure ain't going to be Nathan Jones. Right. A train. Yes. Sometimes, but it was mainly me. If you go back and like watch your survivor series match, I'm the one taking all of John Cena stuff and uh, Kurt's stuff. Yeah, you know, I got a question for you, but I want to hit the chat real quick. If you're in the chat, we're doing super chats tonight. If you want to do a super chat, you can ask Matt Morgan a question through the super chat. Or if you're a member like Michael Costello, I see he's on here as a member. If you got a question for us, Michael Costello, you can ask. He said a uh, better question. Uh, how did you get ripped not to use that for it? I've been trying to get him to use that for it more. He hasn't been I using it much it. at all. Did he I forgot about it. Today? Yeah, you said it a few times. Okay, today, so you're good. Well, the weasels on here. Yeah, don't. Yeah, he oh, has, don't put him over. Yeah, I'm he, not putting him over. He's, he's got to be. A, he's he's got to be a, uh, the super chat. The super. He's got to be the super chat. So weasel, Manny, the weasel, Valverde, former Seymour Punk, former guy that took the trailer jack, former guy that took the suplex from Dad Severn. I'm not mentioning you on here today at all. That's right. <laughs> Beat it. <laughs> Even though he's the he's he's the hottest stud in Jackson County. Oh, he is on fire, baby. He is. Hey, Matt, did you? I know you were in the gladiator thing. Was that a pre WWE and afterwards or just afterwards? Good question. Uh, 2008. So after WWE, while I was with TNA, that's when it was for some reason, man, I always thought you did that. Like before, it, before even no, tough. You're, enough. you're probably confusing when I did this tough enough show. Yeah. I remember you did it tough enough. I remember you were, you were on there. I thought it was, I thought it was another thing. So you did the tough enough. Then they signed you out of that. Yes. When you went to OBW, you were signed, right? Yes. Do you yeah, remember? I, to, I actually had to go to a tryout camp. I tore my knee. I was like 382 pounds when I was on Tough Enough. I was way too fat. 
Um, and um, I tore my knee on that show. Long story short, I got my knee scoped or whatever. Jim Ross calls me and uh, checked on my knee, see how I'm doing. I said, great. I thought I was done. I didn't think they'd want anything to do with me. And he goes, well, look, they want to take another look at you. They thought you had a lot of potential. Obviously, you got major size. Um, we want to take another look at you. So I went down to Heartland Championship Wrestling, where I had my tryout camp. Kevin Thorne, Kevin Seven, he was there. Tomko was there. Rene Dupree was there. Oh, wow. And I get put in a match. Dr. Tom Pritchard was the one that was there leading the way, and, and Jim Ross was there as well, and they're all making their little you know notes on who they're going to sign, essentially. So I was nervous because I never wrestled in a match on Tough Enough. I just learned how to lock up on Tough Enough. That's about it. Wow. So I'm in a match with AJ Styles. He was at the camp, and I swear to God, this is how good he is. He was able to walk me through a decently plausible, this guy's never wrestled a match in his life, mm -hmm. type of match. And he, I, I, from that day, had so much respect for him. Honest to God, he's always been a, he's been a good friend ever since because he led me through that, obviously. Yeah. And I think he was a major part of me getting hired. I really do. Well, um, it, it obviously was. He did a very good job, and you should be in debt to him for life. Yeah, and absolutely. He could, and a lot of guys would have been a fucking asshole and would have buried your ass because they did. They did. He, because he was a smaller guy, and you had the advantage of being built, Jack, tall. You know what I mean? Yeah, hundred percent, Rip. But then again, you ain't no competition to him. No, yeah. no, yeah. he wants you to make it so that. A smaller yep. guy makes him look even better, especially when you're selling for him. <laughs> you're 100 percent right. But so long story short, uh, then all this, I, I went ahead and they ended up signing me out of that camp, and uh, nothing was guaranteed. I was told basically every 90 days I could get cut. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, right. So I had this in my head when I went to OBW that every 90 days I start getting really nervous. You know that I might you know lose my job. You never know. You never knew. No matter how much smoke people blew up your ass, yeah, I just knew every ninety days I could technically lose my job because right. they they would cut people back then. So you show up to OVW. Rip is the uh, the the head trainer at that time, right? Yes. Meet Rip Rogers. You remember the first interaction? Give us give us your first impression, if you remember, of the hustler Rip Rogers. Nothing. Just that he was a former, obviously a former uh, professional wrestler that everybody knew. Um, and that he was, I remember him being a bodybuilder. Uh, Rene Dupree also lived in the same place I lived, the Suburban Lodge, when I first moved there. And Rene was living in there too. Yeah. And uh, so Rene gave me this skinny on the way over to the arena about Rip. So I had all these, you know, preconceived notions of what's what's it going to look, you know, what's it going to look like, that kind of stuff. And uh, but as far as meeting him, no, I just thought he was always very cool, funny as hell. Um. A little intimidated at first. Yeah, I mean, I mean because he told Renee he's going to be dead when he was thirty-five. Everybody's got kind of a. That's such a true story, though. Yeah. He, he said to Masters and Renee. You no, know, I, I told remember. I told Matt Chris when he was thirty. Renee was 30, <laughs> yeah, Renee was thirty-five. <laughs> it's so, you know what I mean. But this is like I was super like. I didn't want to be that guy in the ring that's, you know, getting the get the fuck out. Yeah. Um, but once it happens and you get over it, yeah, then then you're good, right? Then it's who cares. Yep. Do you remember your very first? I'm not talking TV match. No. I'm not even talking practice match, house show match, whatever match. Your very first OVW match because I think I know your first match. I um, always thought of. If, if practice match, it was Rob Conway. Yeah, not practice. I'm talking at a show. Was I even allowed to wrestle at a show yet? I don't. Well, I mean, eventually, eventually, you had to have a first match at a show. Didn't I do like stupid tug of wars and shit like that? <laughs> <laughs> like three on one, and I thought I did that. Um, we well, might have, but I, I don't think it was your first match, unless I remember wrong. Mark, I think you're very. I think your very first match, I think I was in it because it was my first match. I think it was you. Um, I think it was Conway. And 
God, now I can't remember. You, Conway, and maybe maybe Jindrak, somebody against me, Damage, Danny Holly, and uh, Travis Tomko, Bain, whatever his name, name was there. It was a six man. And you gave me this choke slam at the Ramada Inn with that low ceiling in Indianapolis for the finish. I remember that. And I think that was your first I official do OBW this. match. It was you, Conway, and God, who would the other baby face have been? I can't. God. I, I remember can't the remember. Joke slam. I remember because I remember the low ceiling. Yeah, it was the low ceiling at Ramada Inn. I know that match happened for sure. Did your head go through the ceiling? Like Almost. And I'd never Thank taken you. it. It was my first match. I, I'm pretty sure it was yours too, but I could be wrong Thank on that. You many years later, because when I, especially when I first started, my choke slams were brutal, <laughs> brutal. So I was like, Thank I, you. He, many he, years like, later, I've never given one. I was like, well, I've never taken one. It's going to be, yeah, it's gonna be great. Fun, Let's right? make it the finish. <laughs> the greatest one. This will be the greatest choke slam tonight, baby. Yeah. Mine were brutal. No, I thought that was. I thought that was awesome. I didn't know if you would if you would know your your first match or not. I do know. I, I mean, because I do know I wrestled Jindrak at the old Davis Arena on a OVW. But see, that wasn't that's an OVW dark match. I think I had. Yeah. that was my first match. But like how show first match, you might be right. Yeah, you might be right. Also, when you were getting ready to go up with um, Nathan Jones, you guys came to the old building to Nick Densmore's class. To work on like big man double team moves. Don't do you remember what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Somebody, I talk to Jeter all the time. Jeter just reminded me of this the other day, and I, oh my god, (laughs) what was the guy's name? We had to work on double beals. Remember this? Timberwolf. Timberwolf. Poor Timberwolf. Timber. So Timberwolf. For those at home that don't know, nice guy, super nice. Trying to do anything to make it in the business, right? Super nice guy. But he's, he's small, kind of fat, but super short. I mean, he's like hardly five feet anything, right? And he looks so, like he was about 50 years old, so I don't I don't know how old he, he was. He did. I'm trying to be nice here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyways, me and Nathan, were, <laughs> Nick wanted us to work on doing a double beal. Like, just do simple big man, double moves. Double big boot, hand on each other's shoulders, give a guy a double big boot, double beals, simple moves, right, that we can't F up, right? Well, we did. We we went to go double bill poor uh timber was a timber wolf? Timber wolf, yeah. And he lawn, he goes up in the air and then <laughs> lawn darts right on his head. And that was a scary, I'm not lying, that was one of the scariest like five seconds, ten seconds. Well, I mean they I called nine one one. I mean they I thought we legit paralyzed him. I yeah, he serious. turned he turned purple and Nick called nine one one. Yes. I thought we paralyzed nine. him. Yeah. Who had to pay for it? I don't know. They did. Yeah, they came and got him. And then once they, left, scary, once they left, Nick goes, all right, who's next? Yes. I know, I know Danny would have been bitching if he had to pay for well, it. Well, I don't know how it all went down, but he was. we thought he was not, like he was purple. Yes, we did. You're right. Came right down on his head. They, he didn't, have, they didn't have cell phones in, did they? Isn't that crazy? I think so. Well, they yeah. could, if they had cell, cell phones, phones, you could have gimmicked it or did, Played it and we put it on yeah. TikTok and everything. It wasn't like it was today. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. I remember I took the double. I took the double boot, and then I never got back in the ring. I never got back in the ring again after that. Well, after you took Timberwolf. a double boot. Why should you? Because <laughs> we, we were in a line. There was only like I don't know how many. You should have. You should have put it over like you was fucking dead. I should have. Timberwolf- you got to learn to work the fucking teachers, you geek. Hey, as soon as Timberwolf almost died, I said I'm not getting back in there. I just stayed in the back the whole time. Smart. Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have got in with Nathan. I'd afraid he'd have killed me anyway. Oh, Nathan Jones scared me to death. Oh my God! I saw him at. A, I saw him at one of them things where they had had the books for sale, and Mark Henry was. I can't remember what was that. And he was. I was talking to him, and I said, "Man, I'm still scared to death of your fucking ass." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was. Laughing. So I. I don't know if you were there, but Danny, Danny, and Doug Basham had their final match at OVW before they got called up as the as the Basham brothers. And it was electrifying. It was one of the best matches I've ever seen. And we're I'm up at the top in the back, and Nathan Jones is up there, <laughs> and he's like cutting promos on us. Like we're trying to watch this match, and he's like That's having promo, and he's trying, and he's like having promo class, and he's like, "Yes, hey, am, am I scary?" I'm like, Nathan, you you just scare me just sitting here. You don't have to cut a promo, mm-hmm. You're- dude. Try driving in a car with him. That's uh, all he would do. 
could imagine. I can tell you all his promos to The Rock, Undertaker, which is good practice. If we're being yeah. honest, that's what we were taught. Wake right. up in the morning, whether you're shit showering or shaving, cut that promo in that mirror, watch all your facials. Correct. We didn't have camera phones to tape us back then, right? So oh. that's how we learned. But Nathan would take it to the next level. Nathan would be doing it while you're out eating dinner. He would do it in the weirdest way, like what you're talking about. Well, yep. You should be watching that match and learning. Yeah. He's sitting there cutting promos. I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> oh, he's scared of he's scared. Keep of in mind, he's me. killed, he's killed, and he will kill again. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> well, so give okay. Uh, obviously, don't say anything too bad if you think he's going to kill again, but I'm getting you, you got any. I'm kidding too. You got any Nathan Jones stories? What was that? I know you guys weren't together very long, but right bes besides the promo driving around, I mean, just just how he quit you know we were in australia his, his big homecoming for him he's oh i didn't know this story i don't think i didn't either we're at um we're at um let me answer this guy's question can i answer his question or no yeah yeah he's in green you can answer that question michael costello yeah what was matt's favorite pairing or faction to be a part of my favorite pairing if i was tag team with somebody that's what he means by that um probably hernandez at tna um because we were going to be good uh, opponents once we broke up. That's why. Um, but Faction is part of the Fortune group in TNA for a little bit. But um, the storyline of trying to get me into the, what was called back then the main event mafia, which was Kurt Angle's group. Had like Kurt Angle, Kevin Nash, Sting. Uh, uh, who am I missing? Booker T and Scott Steiner. So everybody's wow. a former world heavyweight champion in this main event mafia group. All the top and stuff. so the story was I was trying to get in, right? And so I had to go through every single one of those members one by one until I got to Kurt at TNA's version of what their WrestleMania is, which was called Bound for Glory at the time. And it was a good storyline. It was a year-long storyline. They actually thought it out in advance, not just like some weekly crap, right? It was like six months planned out, eight months planned out storyline. And it helped me a lot. Helped me learn a lot. I got to learn to work with really good workers that were far better than me, much more experienced. And I got I improved because of it. So that was my favorite uh pairing but back to your question about nathan when we're in australia hey, hold on no Sorry. worries michael you didn't interrupt you're, you're in green baby you can no good job Mike. Show. You, can, you can ask all the questions you yeah. want so back to australia that's where nathan jones quit so yep. we were on a house shows tour in australia and we had just found out that wrestlemania 20 me and nathan were going to be beating um all according to plan obviously and Everybody knows everything's written in pencil because it can be erased, right? Mm -hmm. But me and Nathan were going to be winning tag team championships at WrestleMania 20 versus Charlie Haas and Shelton Benjamin. They were going to put the titles back on them, and then me and Nathan would eventually beat them for it. And Nathan ends up quitting while we're in Australia. Wow. He had a hard time t dealing with a lot of the ribbing, right? Like, they didn't rib him hard, to be honest. They didn't really rib him that hard at all, but the the mental part of it that you've got to deal with when you're on the road whether that's you know jbl screwing with you or, or whatever that's part of it i mean it, rip you you played sports the, 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 the ribbing that goes on is nothing compared to what you get if you're playing like a division one college with basketball for instance or football it's nothing even close in those sports i remember fighting the guy who was position i was trying to take as a freshman in college he ended up becoming my best friend after that. Um, mm -hmm. You go through these things with each other in a locker room to either one, entertain each other, get over being away from your family for so long. You got to do this crap to entertain yourselves. Sometimes it can be mean spirited. Don't get me wrong. But long story short, it was too much for Nathan. And um, he just out of nowhere where our match was up next. We're in our gear. Nathan still hadn't dressed. I'm like, Nathan, go get your shit on. We're up. Let's go. And uh, he's like, sorry, mate. I'm sorry to do this to you. He was, it was great getting to know you, but uh, this isn't for me. He took his bag, put it over his shoulder, and then walked out the door. I oh, chased him out in the parking lot in my gear, mm -hmm. going, dude, you can't do this. We're on right now. Do it after the show, please. Talk to Brock. Brock was a fan of his at the time and was uh -huh. trying to help him, I remember. Um, I'm like, go talk to him. Let him hear this. You know, Don't just leave like this. These people paid to see you, believe it or not. We're in your hometown here in Australia. You know, wow. so, but he was over it and, uh, that really hurt me. That sucked, but it is what it is. I didn't know that story. Rip, did you know that story? No. All, all I mean, the, the breaking news we get on this show, you know what I mean? I, I guess it's like 20 years, <laughs> 20 years old, but 
breaking. But it's, it's new to me. Yeah, I did, I've never heard that. So what happened? Is that when you then got, did you? Just did about. You send you back down about. or release? What happened so, to you then after that? Good question. So they they would put me with like as Brock's heater, like Brock needs a heater, but therein lies the heat, right? Yeah. Brock Lesnar doesn't need a bodyguard, right? Get Get it? So, I mean, I was his heater for a little bit, but eventually they ended up sending me back down to OVW. Uh, so I get more experience and Cornette's like, well, fuck you pulled him up as a, he's been my biggest baby face for about eight months and you pull him up and you put him in there as a heel. What'd you expect was going to happen? You should have left him down here. You know, yeah. long story short, I'm back down there. I got to work on being a heel. If you remember in OVW, finally on their television show and promos, obviously practice and uh, got a lot better. I thought got a lot more experience under my belt. And then when they call me back up, they gave me that stupid stuttering character that Vince sold me. But uh, again, I was trained, you know, I, I don't, you know, hindsight 2020, right? What am I going to say? No to the owner and say, no, right. sorry, yeah. Vince, I'm good. I, I, I don't want an idea that you thought up. Right, being yeah. that the last idea he thought up for a character was Carlito's gimmick with the apple and spitting it. That got over. Until other than that, he didn't really come up with people's gimmicks, if you remember. The, yeah. the stupid writing team did. Yeah. So if Vince come up with an idea, no matter what it was, I would say go with it because yeah. he's going to push it as much as he you can think, because it's right? his idea. Now, I don't care how right. stupid it sounds. I don't care. I don't care. If the boss suggests it, he's going to push it. Yeah. At least get it a That's real good chance. Guys, if he told me to wear a pink jock strap on my face, I would have done it because it was his, it would be his idea. It means that he'd be behind, like you said, Rip. And well, that was. might be Vince's idea sometime. Wear that pink jock. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he would wear it. You maybe you can make twenty million, and what the hell, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> uh, kiss my motherfucking ass. So that didn't last long, though, right? The, the stuttering thing that that didn't last very long, did it? God no, thank no, God no, it didn't. But um, because again, I remember, I did remember the only thing I did say to Vince. I said, just want to throw it out there, sir. You do know I graduated college, like with public speaking degree. Like that's my, I'm not saying I'm Jerry Lawler, but I can yeah. talk, sir. You know, I went to school and everything. You know, and he's like, I know. That's why I think this will work. I think you'll have the confidence to pull this off. That kind of thing. Yeah. Um, th then I just shut up and just said, yes, sir. Right. Because I felt like I pushed back a little bit there and I wasn't confident in myself just yet either. If I'm being honest, you know, and again, it's the boss coming up with the idea. Right. So all that. Somebody's can I answer this guy's question or not? Sure, yeah, go ahead, man. Michael Costello, did you get along with Jim Cornette throughout the year? Hell yeah, that dude was like a father figure to me when I was in rap. Yes, love Jim Cornette, still do to this day. Jim was a big advocate for me, especially when I got let go from WWE and he went to go work for TNA. Jimmy was on them like flies on shit. I'm constantly, constantly, constantly saying to them. I think I've heard know, him talk about that. Sign Matt Morgan. What yeah. are you waiting for? Sign Matt Morgan. What are you waiting for? Like, I owe, he's another one I owe so much to, sincerely. And I love him and Stacy to death. Yeah. As a matter of fact, the blueprint does look a little bit like Jimmy as he's grown up and, you know, uh, matured. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, you know, there, who knows what went, you know. No, I don't think so. I don't know. You know <laughs> it, 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 no matter what, it's purely speculation. Speculation. <laughs> hey, tell us the difference between uh, WWE and TNA. The difference, age, like just the difference between WWE and TNA. Like night and day, night and day, as far as being able to um, call your own call your own stuff. My own pro, like literally getting bullet points for a promo, not having it scripted. Uh, now, when I first got there, don't get me wrong, they had my promo scripted. Cause I came in at first as Cornette's bodyguard, right? So right. everyone, except I just wasn't his bodyguard. What would end up happening would be he would go on vacation and I would take over the show as the general manager of the show, right? And I would completely ruin it and run it into the shitter. Excuse my language. Um, no. and, that, and, and that was the gimmick behind it, right? So then Jimmy would come back and scream at me and call me, you know, all these things. And it was a really cool, st funny storyline. But it was just to get me there on their television for almost a year. And they had me in a suit and tie the whole time, Rip, with the whole thought process of he, they wanted people to watch me talk and get to know me as a character verbally versus relying on Old Faithful, my physique, my size. And 
when it was time for me to take that suit off and finally get oh in the ring and wrestle God. a year later. Well thought out. And that was Jeff Jarrett. And that was Jeff yeah. Jarrett and Dutch Mantel's thinking, by the way. That's just like a girl. You keep her body covered the whole time. <laughs> and then all of a sudden she strips down and and your fucking pants are ex fucking exploding <laughs> because you just thought she was a fat frump. And this is she some hot bitch for well, the first time you see it. Damn. Well, well uh, and again, that's credit to Dutch Mantel and Jim. Uh, I'm sorry, Jeff Jarrett. But to even get me in the door, though, again, it's back to Jimmy. Jimmy's the one who helped me with that. Um, but the big difference, again, to answer your question more, you know, exactly. Um, definitely the ability to breathe, like I said, and, and learn your craft while, you know, being on TV. While uh, not not having somebody else come to you and tell you, hey, this is how I think the blueprint would say this. I never oh, got that. Oh, God. No, never got no. That. Uh -uh. that was a big difference right there. You're walking on eggshells. You're scared to death to do anything. If you have to fart instead of bending over and ripping a fucking big one on TNA, you're holding it, holding it, squeezing it out your ass. It's going, and they hear it, but they didn't see it. Somebody goes, or whatever. But no, fuck. You want to have some fun. You yep. got to do, 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 you got to do like you did at TNA. You got to work with guys all better than you. They're going to bring yep. you up to get better and better. And you yes, got to be able to laugh and rib and have a good time. 100%. Made, that was the main difference. That was the main difference. Never worried about being on the road and who I rode with. Would I get heat if I rode with this guy versus this guy? That, that didn't exist there. These were good guys that all worked their ass, their butts off. Like AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, James Storm. These guys all just loved working, wanted to work their tails off, would pick the brains of, like I said, the Kurt Angles and the Steiner, you know, the older guys. And those guys would give back, you know, ironically, you know. So it was, it was, a, it was a good combination. I thought. So do you think that year of, of in your suit <clears throat> talking, do you think yep. that it was at all a slap in the face to Vince McMahon for making you stutter? I don't like think you, they, you don't think it was any kind of dig at him at all to say, Hey, we're going to now take this guy and put him in a suit. No, and have but him I made sure, I, no, but I made sure one of my very first promos I cut, I did say, and no, I didn't stutter. Um, <laughs> at the end of it, that was my way of being a little, <laughs> simple-minded yeah. baby you know being a sore sport right but uh that that is what i did but um not that they don't they, they don't care that much no but the check never bounced did it no sir okay no, that's no, all sir. that goddamn matters <laughs> the check don't bounce ladies and gentlemen yep and now that you're a uh full-time politician we're going to be expecting to see you run for governor or or uh, <laughs> president or uh we're a big political show yeah it, we're extremely political yes mm -hmm. what really no that was a joke it's, it's, no hey ribbing. i voted when i was we're, 18 one we're time. ribbing you man <laughs> here's the thing if you went for higher office my only thing with that is when i get the same like i live in a small city and uh we picked it to live here because it's a small city we're all all of our neighbors know each other um, and one of the cool things is, is you can go to the gas station and five people will come up to you and say, Hey, good job doing this. Or, Hey, I didn't like this. And they'll be able to tell it to you. Right. Whereas I think the higher up in office you go, you lose that ability. You don't get that same attaboy or pat on the back that I physically get here in our city, you know, cause it is such a small city. We're only 16,000 residents, you know? So we're oh, a small wow. city. Smaller than Seymour, man. Hey, we got a, a pro wrestling show. And we get this this big geek on here, superstar, and he wants to talk politics. Yeah, you know what though? I bet after this show, whatever he decides, what, what, whatever he decides to do next, Rip, I guarantee you, after being on this show, he gets elected. You know, probably. I mean, we are worldwide, <laughs> coast to I'm coast. I'm not up again. I'm not up again until 24. I'm good. Oh, hey, oh well, yeah, hell, he don't just, don't forget about you by then. He can just coast. <laughs> coast on so how did it all come to an end in wrestling, man? I don't even know. Like the TNA deal, did you just retire? Then you yeah. come back a couple different times for yeah, so, brief. So this brief is why deal. you can't trust Wikipedia because any jabroni can go on there and write whatever they want, and you really can't stop them from doing it. That's that's why teachers will never allow a student to use Wikipedia as a source. Uh, piece of information you remember the name dre blitz by chance who dre blitz no maybe okay so on wikipedia it said rip rogers trained yeah. like john <laughs> cena <laughs> batista randy orton and dre, dre blitz, blitz. <laughs> yeah awesome 
<laughs> so, so that's what I mean. You, you can't you can't trust it. But um, so w- when I stopped wrestling was me and my wife were trying to have a kid for like 12 years, dude. And we were yeah, told yep. we had no shot of hell ever having kids. Right. I followed we that through, story a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. We went through seven bouts of IBF with ICSI. That's like 20 grand of pop. Keep in mind. None of them worked. And um, finally, by grace of God, she got pregnant naturally. And uh, I was just blown away by it. And then finally, we didn't want to tell nobody because we didn't want to curse ourselves because we had so many other miscarriages and stuff, right? Yeah. So long story short, it's 2014. Um, my uh, uh, wife is pregnant and ja- holding Jackson for the my son Jackson, that's his name, when he was first born, holding him in the delivery room. Like I was going back to WWE at this point. I was oh, going wow. to be re-debuting in the Royal Rumble back in 2014. I was only just a few weeks away. I had new gear, knew everything. I was going to be able to be the blueprint. There. It was going to be awesome, right? But I had just left TNA, and I was about to go there, back to WWE. It was going to be a surprise entrant in the Rumble. And I'm holding my kid for the first time on January 7th. Literally, I want to say two weeks before I was supposed to be doing all this. And I don't know how to explain it to you, man, but this, this switch goes off in my head that I don't want to be taken away. I don't want to be away from him a single night, honest to God. Um, cause it took us so much yeah. to have him, Right. And it really ended up being the right decision because he ended up being diagnosed just two and a half years later as being, uh, extremely nonverbal autistic. Um, and there's no way had I been on the road wrestling and things like that, just to turn that over to my wife to take care of and handle yeah. that wouldn't have been cool. And I beg God for this kid for 12 straight years. Now here he is in my hands and I'm going to go away on no. I'd been smart with my money at that point. I've been wrestling for what? 12 years. Um, you know, that's enough. And, uh, so called WWE told them what's going on. They were happy for me. I actually called TNA as well. To, Cause they thought I was going back to WWE right. and I told them uh, I'm retiring. Um, uh, you know, if you guys ever need anything in the future, let me know. I'll do maybe a couple of one-offs here and there, but way down the road. So years later, I did do a, a couple of one-offs with TNA so my son could actually physically watch me wrestle in person, right? Just to oh, see wow. how he would respond to it. You know, like I said, he's not verbal autistic, so you don't always know yeah. how he's taking things in, how he's receiving things. So, uh, but it was cool. He had a smile on his face from ear to ear, so that was cool. Um, had That's to put wild. his headphones on him when I brought him backstage because it was super loud, right? But uh other than that, um, it was a cool experience. But, had, had you shown him like pictures or videos or anything before that? Yes. It- yes. Yes. Definitely a lot of YouTube videos and just to try to see. He doesn't really sell it at all, if I'm being yeah. honest. I don't think he's, I don't really think he gets it. He doesn't get like the action figure stuff. I don't think he really gets it. Um, you know, he plays with it sometimes, but I don't necessarily right. think he's made the connection. Well, good for you, man. That's, that's, a, that's a hell of a story, man. Yeah, blessed, blessed. Again, we're supposed to have kids. We're, we're supposed to have kids, you know. Yeah. So, just felt like the, not to get all biblical on everybody. I always felt like the Lord made us wait that long, so I could be financially and also mature, mature wise, be ready. Because if I had to have that boy twelve years earlier, I don't know if my wife right. and I would have been ready to have to handle and be able to do the things for him that we have to do for him every single day. Every day he goes to a speech therapist or occupational therapist, sensory integration therapist, feeding therapist. That's every day before we take him to his special school, you know? Got it. Yeah. Wow. I'm just blown away by what a good guy you are, Matt. Yeah, man. Kudos. Not a lot of people... I mean, I, I shouldn't say not a lot of people do that. It'd be a tough, tough call, I think, probably for anybody. But that's, yeah, man. It's so, awesome. and if I'm being honest with myself, though, guys, let's say this was my second year in the business and I'm with WWE at the time. I'm in OVW, let's say. I don't know if I would be able to make that call. Right. I'd have to go make that money. So I don't, I don't want to yeah. put down any other guys that have to go on the road and wrestle for a living to make money for their family. I don't mean to, to put it that way, and I hope it doesn't come across that way. Um, but everybody is in a different scenario. You know, my yeah. biggest dream was to be a dad. That's the truth. Yeah, man. Well, it's hard to transition from there, but I'm going to try to anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try to anyway. And I've actually got a personal question. I So I looked up the Gladiator stuff. <laughs> I saw a couple of YouTube clips. I saw you up on the platform with the big, like, cotton ball things or whatever yep. those things are. 
Yep, and I think right. both of the, I think both of those guys really could have taken you down. To be honest, <laughs> I thought both of them kind of had you on your toes or on your heels. I think the first guy for sure had you. <laughs> I mean, how fixed was that? How staged was that? Is that is there any real no. reality to that? Or it was the best because we had a green light to do whatever we wanted. It was great. I loved it because, but think about it. I was wrestling with TNA at the time on their television show every week on Spike TV. Can you imagine if I got beat by a five foot seven guy? That's that's why I thought maybe it was. I would never be able to walk back in the locker room. I would never be able to live that down. Pretty sure that first guy had you. I don't know. I'm pretty sure that first guy had you. You're out of your mind. <laughs> I am the only undefeated American Gladiator in the history of the whole show going back to the 80s. As far as Were you on one show? No. Oh, okay. All right. Four. Four <laughs> shows. He was like one for one in, in uh, three-point shots. No. No. What else did you do on there? Everything? Did you do all the events or just that event? No. Um. God, Pyramid. <sighs> I don't know the names of all of them. There was like they, yeah. they did new ones because it was a newer version of the show. Right, yeah, definitely the pyramid. I did it like five times. Um, God, what was the other? One? There was a couple so, other ones. This so is kind of like football. We had to take the ball and put it in the yeah, uh, in the thing. Yeah, but but that's me and two other gladiators too doing it. So it's not me and singles competition like the uh, joust was. You know what I mean? So no script, huh? No, that people are winning money. No. Okay. Hey. Those guys are trying trying to win money. And remember, they're competing against each other, not the gladiators, essentially, right? It's whoever has the best time or did the best and got their ass kicked the least against the gladiators is who wins the show, essentially. I mean, Rip was a boxer and, and fixed boxing matches, so figured gladiator could be fixed. Anything could be fixed. <laughs> <laughs> Anything I mean, could be fixed. I mean, Rip fixed his own boxing matches, for crying out loud. No, that, I, I swear, definitely not. Some of them. Some, some yeah. of them. Yeah. Some of them I asked the guy, you know, if you want to. Tell him the Cody Cox story. Cody Cox? <laughs> or what? Yeah. Well, that's the guy I, I, I boxed him in, in Louisville. He right? was legit, too. He yeah, was... he won. Well, he remember how he got killed? He got mm-hmm. choked out when he went home because he got a, everybody in town was scared of him, and all the bouncers jumped on him. They choked him out and killed him because they were scared of him. But I but I, I boxed Cody Koch, the Alaskan assassin in Louisville. And what we happened? Walked, we walked in. I said, hey, uh, Cody, hi, Rip Rogers. We're fighting. He goes, what? I said, yeah, we're fighting. I said, you're going over. He says, what? <laughs> I said, you're what? winning. He goes, I know I'm going to win. I said, don't. I said, get with it, you geek. <laughs> I said, this is what we're doing. <laughs> and then he went out there and I cut a pro. He went along with it? Huh? He went along with it. Well, the thing what it was is we went blah, blah, blah. I told him what to do. He did it. He said, that was the most fun I've ever had in my life in anything. I said, it's called working there, kiddo. He says, man, can we do that again? I said, well, Jack Dempsey used to all do it all the time with the same guy. But, but now you can't do it. They got stuff on uh, tape and, and uh, they, they keep records and everything. But uh, wow. But it was it, it was awesome. You tried to the, do it with another guy, and he next, said no, so it, rip beating. The, the next time I saw Cody Koch, he had bleach blonde hair. <laughs> he copied my gimmick. It was awesome. Oh, my God. Really? Yeah. I mean, you can do whatever. I, I, hell, I, I boxed some a left-handed Mexican. I, I told Pete Suda, Susan's the, the promoter, I'll, take, I'll fight anything but a Mexican or a – because they can all fight, and a, and a southpaw. So he gave me a left-handed Mexican because before I was supposed Ooh. to fight this universal uh, of Louisville football player. And I intimidated him so much by just being a wrestler that he acted like he broke his, he tripped and fell down the steps. And he was a big, like six, three, 240 pound guy. And I can't fight. And he, he obviously couldn't either. So he, he bailed. So I made Pete yeah. pay me what he owed me. So I can see Pete say, I'll get you, you son of a bitch. <laughs> and still, <laughs> so that Mexican knocked the shit out of me. It was just like Rocky <laughs> spinning around, my, uh, discombobulated, beat the holy shit out of me. Damn, Billy. Oh yeah, Rip goes out there for a boxing match with the bleach blonde hair, hat on backwards. Yeah. Pink, Ma- Malcolm pink, X hat. Malcolm X hat. Mm-hmm. The pink, yeah, uh, you, did you have so, the pink jacket or whatever? Talk, oh, yeah. Cutting a promo like it's a wrestling show. Yeah. <laughs> 
Rip, how long were you wrestling at this point when you did this boxing? I was 41 when I boxed. How did I, I not know this? You were probably did right. You know? This was 1995. 95. How was this not one of these Rip stories that, that I've heard thousands of others about? How did I not hear this? It was like the Nathan Jones story. We were just waiting just, just tonight to, <laughs> to bust it out. Yeah, this was it. It, it was well what, it was, it it was what was happening, you know. <laughs> so I fought this one guy in his hometown. And I'm fighting him, and he sees me. And I, and I got down to like 197, which made me look real big. And he got so intimidated. His eyes were like turning red. I thought he was hyperventilating. I thought he was the prophet thinking about that one-hour yep. Broadway. Yep. And I said, I said, Monty, I was fighting this guy named Monty Cox and who's the MMA guy. But I said, Monty, I said, uh, you want, you not give me your payday and you can knock me out in the first round. I don't give a shit. And he wouldn't do it. He said, no, I don't want to. I said, are you sure? So I said, okay, this motherfucker tries to kill me about the first minute in. And then all of a sudden I said, I see him go, <sighs> I said, you're, you're mine now, motherfucker. You got him. You got him now, yeah. So I knocked him in. I knocked three knockdowns in the second round, and then, and that was it. But wow. but I but I said, give me your payday. And because he was from Davenport, Iowa, and that's where we fought at. Uh, so uh, anyway, so, he did. He wanted to try it on his own. It didn't work, so, but, but what the fuck. To, to all the fans that watch the show, I'm sure they already know if not. Then you're not watching. Then you're probably not paying attention to Rip talk. But Rip is a cardio king, uh, cardio king. That, that is something else I should thank you for because it was very hard for me to blow up um, because of the crazy drills we did. But you know, also, uh, but also, you learn to relax. Yes, you learn to relax, and then you don't get tired like other guys because you're busy thinking too much. Well, no, what I did is I learned how to pantomime being intense versus really shoot in my entrance. And oh, like yeah. Blowing my nut and my energy and mm -hmm. just my entrance alone like I used to do versus pantomiming at all. You know what I mean? Because I was yeah. relaxed enough to do it, right? But You know, the other thing, too, and people mention all the time, you said those crazy uh, cardio drills. They weren't, though, like squats and things like that. They were wrestling drills. So it was all – Chain wrestling, wrestling, you know, that's how you got your wind. And right. you also learned as you as you did it. You just didn't go out there and do a bunch of squats. I would tell everybody, I said, when I'm doing squats, it's not for cardio or none of that stuff. You want wrestling cardio, get in the ring and wrestle. Or wrestle. Yeah. Just yeah. do it. Yes. And then push yourself, get a hold, yep. fight up. Yep. Use your facials, intensity, blah, blah, blah. Fight back and forth. If it's yep. too smooth, it's too goddamn phony. I don't want crisp stuff. I want stuff to look like it was a struggle. You can't pancake block a guy every time. Shit. Yep. No, this has got to be a, a like it's an athletic contest. I don't want all the punches right on the, on the nose. I want you to miss. I want you to barely hit him. I want you to glancing blow. Amen. Make it like it's a real goddamn fight. Amen. Amen. And that's that's what's part. missing today for sure. What'd you say? And I think that's what's missing today for sure in most, most of what I watch. It is. Now we're just watching it to see how athletic these kids are and what's the crazy spot they're going to do next. And, okay, as an athlete, I can say, holy shit, I couldn't do that. That's impressive. Right. However, it's not the same way I watched wrestling back when I was a kid and really believing, and I'm not a mark, I'm not saying I know wrestling's not, work uh, but still there were still moments you get lost in a certain story i'll give you an example that sammy zane storyline right now with the bloodline that's a great storyline yeah. even rip put it over yeah <laughs> that's a good storyline yeah and he's awesome he's he's great at his part too man like right yeah his facials his body language everything your eyes always go to him yep. create yeah. the character then they'll buy the wrestling but create the character Sir, it's pretty fucking. Let me answer this guy's question, Mike Costello again. Yeah, he's hot. He's a hot did item here today. Did you talk a lot with Hulk Hogan during American Gladiator days? Yes. So Hulk is the one that actually told them that they should look into hiring a professional wrestler for the role of the Beast character. So the Beast character that I played, people auditioned for it. Um, Johnny Stamboli, I believe, auditioned oh, really? for it. Um, 
I want to say Luther Reigns. I'm not positive about that. This is just I heard this third hand, so maybe that's not true. That's but been, yeah. they, had, they had others all do it, uh, audition for it, and then luckily, you know, he told them to go with me. I but, thought maybe um, Hogan was with TNA at the time. He wasn't. He wasn't with. No. Me. Okay. No, is that weird? No. He can, yeah, he came a little bit after that. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah. So you was wrestling in that funny ring? No. Yes. Yes. In, and it that did like? feel that way at first. It did huh? feel that way at first. Yeah. Did you get used to it? Yes. Yes. I know. Tons of house shows. Eventually, I got used to it, but because you go to shoot a guy off and it's, yeah. Yeah, Let's you got you got to you got to think a little bit more. You do, and also rip the the ropes were super tight because super the, tight. they got the shorter between the turnbuckles. Yeah. They're shorter, right? So I'll be, I always felt like a big kid in a playpen. Well, um, really, it was a it was just a fucking <laughs> stupid idea. <laughs> it, 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 it's what they thought separated them, you know. But then when Hogan got there, he was just like. This nah. does not look like a pro wrestling ring. Right. Why is, get rid of this? Now, did they go back to it? It's a good question. I don't know. I thought they did for. I don't know. If, I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know if they did or not. I thought they did at least for a little bit, but maybe they did. I'm not sure if they did. No. We're about an hour, Rip. You got any, You got anything else here? Shit, we're on fire. I'm just listening to him tell stories and shit. I, I want more. It. I want more uh, gladiator dirt, but he said it's all just normal competition, man. So I don't know. No, it really is. I'll tell. I'll tell you that in a heartbeat. Come on. Hey, how about Tough Enough? What was it like? I don't know if I've ever talked to anybody that was actually on Tough Enough. What was any? That's before like the NXT where they did. Yeah. You know, like the competitions out in the ring yeah. and stuff. I know there was competitions. Were was your right. group competitions? Because I, I no. thought I remember early on it was more wrestling, and then it became. Yes competitions yes. did you yeah, have competitions right. in yours you have competitions to like win dinner for all the other competitors or something okay. stupid like that right but every day you were you had to run we had to run a mile and beat our time every morning oh. um before we get into the arena to start the warehouse to start wrestling or trying to wrestle and uh Learn how to bump, back bump, front bump, learn how to lock up, learn how to chain wrestle, um, that kind of stuff. But you did it all day. And their intent was to try to, you know, drown you out and give wrestling a better name, right? To try to make it look, it's not as easy as everybody thinks it is, especially when you have like Bob Holly and guys like that, that are the trainers of the show. They're going to try to weed out the week as soon as possible to make that point, which right. I don't blame them for. Um you know, but anyways, um, it was, it, it was cool. But again, like nobody was there sitting there to was going to pull me off to the side and say, Hey, all this stuff you're learning. It's good to learn. It's good to know. Like what happened with OVW, right? When I got to OVW, even though I learned how to do everything, Rip and Danny or Jim, everybody, even some of the older veterans there would always pull me aside and say, that's great. You know how to do all that. That's good. You have to know it all. You have to know all the basics. All the fundamentals, man, just like basketball. You have to learn how to lay up a ball before you can start dunking it, right? I said, yeah. And they said, well, same thing here. Still do everything you're being asked to do. But you're going to also have to learn a different way to wrestle because what you're doing in there right now is just learning the fundamentals. But you're going to be doing things that are going to be slightly different because you're here to be different. You're not here to be like everybody else and that's in that ring right now. Now, I was still so green rip. I didn't get it. I didn't understand that yet. I didn't. I didn't get it at all. I just thought, well, shoot, I have a 41-inch vertical leap. I need to show that off. So I'm going to do a leapfrog right now. Um, Rip will be really impressed with that. <laughs> um, you know, like that's how that was, that was my thinking. And and so it did. It did t it's not until I got to TNA did it the, the light bulb finally really go off on, holy shit, this is what they meant. Who was in your uh, group at, uh, at Tough Enough? Who won that? Do you remember? who Was, was that oh, Jack? Or, was that Linda Miles in the them? Two girls. Who? Good call. Linda and Jackie both won it. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. They made me leave after, I don't even know how long I was there, like maybe six episodes or something like that. I tore my knee. Oh, because we were on the beach. Yeah, there you go. There's an example, Van Lylas. We were doing beach training, which was good for cardio, okay? But it was like an obstacle course. So I'm climbing up this eight-foot wall, which basically you just jump up and essentially – 
hop over essentially, right? If you're yeah. going as fast as you can and jumping as high as you can, right? Well, I did that and I landed in this kid who's in front of me's foothold. So my ankle goes one way, my knee oh. snapped the opposite. Oh god. And I was pissed. And I was like, how the f- is this supposed to teach me how to wrestle again? Could somebody tell me that? How is this showing me how to wrestle? Yeah. I was pissed because I knew I was screwed. I knew my knee was shot. And I was so angry because I thought that'd be my one and only opportunity to make it because i didn't know how you make it to wwe you can't yeah. go to boys and girls club when you're eight years old and say hey show me how to swing a steel chair and be a pro wrestler how do you how do you it wasn't like it is today where there's schools all over the place at least there wasn't where i'm from up north there was like one school up in massachusetts that's the only one i knew of so i didn't know yeah. how you got involved yeah wow that's wild anybody else get signed out of there do you remember besides the winners from my season oh kenny king Okay. Yep. He was. I didn't know he was in that. I didn't know he, he was, was awesome. I, I I felt he was the front runner. I thought he would have won that. I thought he was going to win that show. He was really good. He picked up everything the fastest. Yeah. You know what I mean. He had a hard time with the promos and things like that, but his wrestling was freaking really good. He picked it up much faster than all of us. Um, with this guy Jake. Remember Jake, the, the fireman with the crazy mohawk. Yep. Super shredded. Yep. Yeah. I do remember him. I what remember him. Win. I don't know. He just yeah. fell off. I never heard from him again after that. Yeah. Well, she got yeah, ripped. Wait, one more guy. With that crazy guy Hawk. Do you remember Hawk? Ben? I remember the name. I don't. I don't. He was I, crazy, funny as hell guy. Not really crazy, but yeah. You know. I think your season. I, I think I only watched probably the first two seasons. I didn't really watch after that, but I don't. I don't really remember. You didn't watch Capitelli and, and John uh, 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 Tony Nitro season when they. Well, who was the first? Oh, no, wait, I did. What, they what, were Nidia? season three. They were season three. They were I did watch that because Nydia was one, right? Nydia, yes. was she one? Nydia and Maven were one. Okay, and- I did watch them then. Yep, I was thinking they were one. I forgot about Nydia. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking it was flip-flop. I did watch Nydia John. was getting good. Nydia got good after OBW training. Oh, yeah, I liked, I liked her on TV, WWE TV. I thought she yep. did a good she job. All into her character, all into it. Yeah, I actually just uh, reached out. I don't know if you remember her sister or not, Lourdes. Of course. Tell she her was, I said hi. She was down there. I just reached out to them to try to get them both on the show at the same time. So That would be awesome. <laughs> we'll see if we that can. That would be awesome. So many of us OBW guys love watching this because. We can pull that off it, or not. Rip called it. Rip said this would be the best time of your life, and he wasn't lying. It was. Oh, at OBW? Or, 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 or tonight. Part. Tonight. I think you meant tonight, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. OBW. No, it's like. It's like. <laughs> It's like when you're playing ball in high school and you don't go to college. The best the highlight oh, yeah. of your life is the high school. Hell yeah. If you're playing ball in college, the best time of your life is playing. And then if you are lucky enough to be a get into pro wrestling for any time after you're out of college, this is the greatest time of your goddamn life. And it's not about the money. It's 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 about the relationships, the stories. God damn, you can just talk to the guys that was there and you all got a shit eating grin on your face. And when you're an old fucker like me, say this, you're going to look back and enjoy this because this is the greatest time of your motherfucking life. I think he was talking specifically about OVW, though, right? Was that, did, did you have a better time in OVW than like WWE? I, I'm sure you had a good time with TNA. No, no, OVW by far. No, it's always OVW because by far. it's like when Santino's there, there's four in a goddamn room. Yeah. They got no money. Yeah. All they got is stories, entertaining each other, learning survival skills. You can make that goddamn money later, or you're going to yeah. come in broke anyway and die broke. So who gives a fuck? So have a good time. Yep. Hey, you want to know something? My class, we're all still friends. I still talk to Nova. I still talk to Jeter. Still talk to Hitman. Still talk to Magnus. Um, Mickey, obviously. Um, yeah. God, I mean, all the time. Like, it's not just like, hey, like once in a while, every Christmas, do we talk? We talk consistently. That's awesome. All man. throughout the year, it's pretty cool. It's always felt like a family. All right, Rip. This is fucking we got to awesome. let him go. He's the the mayor of the year, father of the year, husband of the year. He's overtaken everything that you always say about me. Matt Morgan is now <laughs> overtaken every single one of those accolades that I used to have. And he's younger than you, taller yeah. than you, better looking than me. Everything. And he's better, better dressed. We should have never had him on the show. No, he should makes, have never he, had him on the show. He makes you look bad, and you 
destroy me. Terrible. So he, make, he, if, make, he makes me look like Manny the Weasel Valverde, who I swore I wasn't going to talk about. If this thing wasn't live, I wouldn't put it out. You know, it would ne- nobody would ever see this if it wasn't live. If it wasn't live, yeah. <laughs> right. Hey, we do one more thing here at the end. We gotta, we gotta get a, gotta get a good head bob in. Do the head bob with us. This the king's head bob. That's it. Hey. For big, big so song here at the end. There we go. To- hey, thanks a lot, man. Really appreciate it. Thanks, it's awesome man. having you. Love you guys. I mean, well, good night. Love you, man. And Rip, Greatest thank ever. you for everything. I, I mean that, Rip. Thank you for everything. Greatest ever. Hey, just send me money, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I tried a TNA. Oh. If you remember, I did try. I wrote Dixie hard about that. Speaking of Michael Costello, thank you for the uh, super chat tonight, man. All that right, was awesome. super chat, baby. Michael, Michael Costello. Costello. We're out of here. Thank you, guys. Love you guys.